said call. call and he called and she talked to that. Sorry, that's what I was telling you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't even realize. Show down, I open. I hold it. No, you have to show you here. I mean, that was your cue to start, is what I meant. I know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That was my cue to start. So here we are. Next vlog, number four. Check out the previous ones if you haven't already. My name is Rem Perinkema. That's Donnie Peters. We're giving you updates behind the scenes from the World Series of Poker. And right now, we are sitting just a few feet away from the 250K, yes, quarter million dollar buy-in, no limit hold'em event, the biggest buy-in of the summer. We've got a few interviews lined up with some of the players in this event. All the superstars are here. Negreanu, Adrian Mateo, Scott Siever, Dan Zach. Ivy. Well, Ivy. I didn't speak to Ivy. <laughs> it, Ivy. As soon as Ivy right. speaks to me, I'll mention him. I didn't speak to him. We spoke to the other four guys though. And then after that, we're gonna dive into an update on the 25K Fantasy. It's been a few weeks. Not too much is going on in terms of our team, but we're, we're a second half squad. That's, that's how we drafted, that's how we, we, we planned it all out. We're gonna check in, see how we're doing for the 25K Fantasy Draft. And then we have behind the scenes footage of Antonio Abrego, our photographer. We sort of show you guys how he works and operates. Our favorite uncle, Uncle Ron, made a deep run in the $500 freeze out. He brought his dog. He was barking at the cards. He didn't bring the lucky melon. No, that's a big mistake. <laughs> big mistake on, on Ron's part, not bringing the lucky melon, but you have to st stay tuned for that. And then last but not least, the two cranky men up top at the Muppets, Jeff Platt and Brent Hanks, are also in this video. I don't know how they made it in the video. I don't know why we pay attention to these guys, but they're also in it. So hey, let's go check it out. All right, we are here at the quarter million dollar tournament, and of course, these guys have lots of money, but did they spend any of it on their wardrobe? Let's find out. Scott Seaver got the team on his back for 25k fantasy. That's how I like to see it. But Scott, take me into the mind of what these weeks are like for you. You go to bed late, you get up early to play cash, you're back here to register, you grind min cash, and then you play 250ks. Give us sort of the scope of this series. It's, it's just the love of the game. You got to get in there. You have to always know there's action ready, and I want to be a part of it. And basically, wherever you turn, there's new and exciting action, and I just got to get in. What's the biggest thing you've missed because you were stuck in the tournament or stuck in the cash game? Uh, I, I don't even know. I don't even want to know. I, I hear, you know, rumors or texts, oh, there's this here, there's that there. Gotta focus on whatever you're doing. Can only be one person. So this 250K, it escalated quickly, and I feel like it's escalating even more. What's the vibe in the room right now? The vibe's great. These super high rollers always have the best vibe. Everyone is honestly a lot more relaxed than even at lower price points, and it's just a fun, good atmosphere right now. How do you switch gears, though, between playing a $1,500 event and then this type of event? The thing is, you don't switch gears. You have to be playing your your game at all times. This is the reason why you have to have your maximum focus when you're playing a 1500 because you never know when you're going to need to turn it on on a moment's notice. So when you're in that moment, when you're in a hand, you never realize, you're like, oh, maybe I should bluff a bit more here because the buy-in is not very high. No, I'm not really thinking about that, honestly. I'm just trying to do what I think is right. And then 10K study, you know, you're, you're making runs left, right, and center. You know, you have one bracelet already. How important is it for you to, to get a second one or would you already consider this a success because winning one a year is also pretty good? Win winning one a year is like pretty good, but you know, it's, it's only pretty good. We're, we're trying to make some real moves here, you know. One, one a year, I've done that the past few years. Uh, we're looking for more at this point. <laughs> never never satisfied, never. always hungry. Scott Seaver, good luck. Thanks. Bro. Dan Zach here, leading POI, winning two bracelets, life is good, but all of a sudden you're in a quarter million buying tournament. If I would have told you this, let's say, you know, four years ago, how would you react to it? 
Uh, not really believed it. You know, it's just not realistic. But here it's happened, so I guess I'm happy to be here. Does it feel any different than what you usually play, just just from the poker sense? I don't think so. I mean, I've played very big cash games in the past five years. I've played a 100k no, no limit tournament. I've played a number of 50k no limit tournaments. I haven't had any success, but I, certainly they all feel kind of the same. When you sell action for a tournament like this, you know, it's not like a 50k PPC where you're, you know, playing these games all year round. This is something where you also said on Twitter, you know, this is not your main game. The people that invest in you, are they just like happy to give you a chance? Like, how, how does that conversation go? Yeah, so it's it's been a mixture of, uh, I posted on Twitter, um, a mixture of friends who are just looking for a sweat and they looked at the field and they were like, yeah, you're probably breaking even and like we're down to gamble and take a flip. And then random Twitter accounts just sending uh, PayPal and just like, hey, like I'm a big fan from Live at the Bike or I'm a big fan from various streams and following the World Series and I just, you know, it seems like you would be winning this so I'll take a shot. I mean, it's obvious you have like tons of poker talent, so is it also then ultimately a goal to become a regular down the line in this type of event? No, uh, definitely not. These guys work really, really hard. Um, I don't like studying that hard, especially not one game. Um, you know, it's not like I don't play no, no Limit at all, it's part of the mix, and I used to play it straight. Uh, for a while I was playing live at like, you know, 100, 200, 200, 400 on a daily basis, but it's, it's been a few years and these guys work exceptionally hard with the tools that are available and it's, it's not something that I envision for myself. So do you think that it's a different type of personality and player that can do that sort of narrow-minded focus on just one game or is it just more fun for you to play everything? Well, it's certainly more fun for me to play everything. My, my background just in life is I love to pick up new games, learn new rules, figure out the strategies and, and move on to the next game, which is why mixed games were such a great fit. Um, I do think it's a different type of person. I think the people who succeed in this are particularly strong at, these days at least, very strong at sitting down and just grinding and study. Um, very meticulous and, and very good at, um, you know, efficient work, uh, which is just not a huge skill set of mine. Uh, so, you know, again, I, I don't know if I'm a favorite in this. I'm, I'm certainly not some no limit wizard or crusher, but I, I like my chances to at least, you know, have a shot to win the tournament. Final question here. You have to, of course, tell your players at the table that they have to return the favor and come play the 50K with you, which is more your bread and butter. How many of them can you talk into playing the 50K? I don't think um, I don't think that's going to work. I don't know if the 50K is big enough for the guys here. So, you know, it's only a fifth of the buy-in. So um, maybe I'll try, but I, I doubt I'll get anyone to, to wander over. All right, that's Dan Zach, leading POI, two-time brace of the winner, and he might win the 250K. Thanks, Remco. Adrian Mateos, title defender in this 250k. Does it make you extra excited playing this event? Yeah, of course. This is a special tournament. Uh, probably is the biggest line of this year, so I'm pretty excited to play today and let's see what happens. I would like to go back to back. Do you still have like strong good memories about the win from last year or because you win so much they all sort of blend together? Well that last year was in November, so it's like only like seven months, so yeah, I have a lot of good remember. Uh, when are you finally going to start playing mixed games? Because really, you have four bracelets, but hey, if you add those games, you might have ten in a few years. Yeah, maybe. Like, I don't know. For now, I, I want to, to feel really strong and not limit holding. And I, I think that if I start learning other games, maybe my no limit holding game going, going a little bit down. So for now, I'm, I guess I'm a little bit lazy to start to learn a new game. And I, I, I only like to play poker if I feel really competitive. So I don't want to feel like the fish of the missing game, so right now I, I went away. He's still a one-trick pony, but a very, very good trick. <laughs> Adrian, good luck. Thank you. All right, everyone. So we kicked off the vlog series by looking at the 25K Fantasy Draft. We haven't checked in on it so far, but we're going to go do that now. We're going to look at the $1,500 eight-game tournament. We have a couple horses still in. They are in the money. Hopefully they can make a run. Let's go check them out. Over there, David Baker. The next game, no limit holding. David, it's good, it's good to see you in the money Thank for our 25k team. I did fin it for you. Finally getting off the board, you know. I did it all for you. Good. You're back from COVID. Back, back from the COVID slash IR list for back, us. Back from COVID. <laughs> I uh, I was gonna just fold the money because I know how desperate yeah, you are for that Josh point. Yeah, but our buddy over here, Josh, gave me a courtesy double up. Two, Twice. <laughs> two, two courtesy, courtesy double ups for my buddy. So we're live. So right. next step, field bonus. I don't know what it is. Let's go. Let's Top 18. Just get there. All right. Good luck, guys. 
Payout 662. We may have lost David Baker, but Daniel Ospina lived to fight on in a quest for more points. Josh Arie was making a run for Team Negranu, and Sean Deeb for Team Dan Shack. Andy, we'll just take a new deck. I just keep pulling a card every game. Two new decks. Daniel Weinman continues to put up points for Team Sean Deeb. And the beautiful Jeremy Osmus found himself in the middle of another deep run for Team ODB. AJ Kelsall drafted Randy Ohel, and he was also in the mix in this one. And then Marco Johnson was once again padding the scoreboard for Team Maria Ho. Adam Friedman just may be the best mixed game player in the world and was once again showing it for Chad Eavesledge's squad. Brandon Shaq Harris has been quiet this summer, but it only takes one tournament to change all of that. And who doesn't love some Scotty Wynn, baby? Daniel DeGrano right here, 25K Fantasy Update. How does it feel to get so lucky with these guys not even winning any bracelets but scoring all the points? <laughs> yeah, I feel super lucky because like it's the first time that I might even, I haven't even cashed, but since I've been running it, it may be the first time that I cashed, but I feel so blessed. <laughs> Hashtag blessed. I mean, I have to bring up a point with you because we are making runs, we are winning bracelets, but obviously these high rollers getting Players added and more and more getting added yeah, is heavily skewing the points distribution. Are you considering changes for next year? Well, this is part of why I just I drafted guys that play No Limit Hold'em, like Nick Schulman, like Dario San Martino. I was going to go for Fox, and, which I, you know, bit big on, couldn't get him. But no, I mean, listen, the schedule is what it is. Every year, the rules come, you come in with the rules and you say, okay, this is what it is. Who do I draft based on that? In the, historically, it was always mixed game guys exclusively. And then they added this new, you know, group of players you can draft based solely on the high rules. Yeah, so we are slowly climbing up. We have two bracelets. We have multiple big final tables. We're going to get some field bonuses later on. So everyone who invested in our team, please be patient. We're going to do it. Or do you hate our team? I can't even remember who's on your team. Do you have anybody good? We have Scott Seaver and Brian Hastings killing it. ODB Baker, not really doing too much. I bid hot. on Scott Seaver. Yeah, yeah. He, the rest of them. Uh, we have um, Daniel Ospina, who's a big time low, low stakes mixed game grinder. Yeah, wouldn't have picked him. Uh, <laughs> Eddie, no offense. Eddie Blumenthal. Wouldn't have picked him. Played big, big um, oh, mixed game. There well. were guys in the cutting room floor I thought were better. All right, so, so clearly we have something to prove here with our team. Uh, quick switch over to your series. Of, of course, you're always shooting for the stars, but we know that poker is a long grind. How do you feel about your game this summer? Really good, you know, outside of maybe like four total hours of like poor play or you know sloppiness I felt really really good about how I played you know and the great thing about the World Series poker is it doesn't matter how big your hole is in the first half all it takes is one one deep run and all of a sudden it turns things around and the plan is to do so in this 250 kit. Are you a little bit surprised and I'm quieting down a little bit about who showed up for this event? Yeah I was shocked the first four people I saw I recognized one Kathy and I didn't recognize the other three so there's like four non-pros and there was like a whole bunch of people that just happened to have 250k laying around in their couch that they wanted to spend and spin up. This is the one. Daniel Legrano is going to make a run. Stay tuned. I don't know why you guys want to do this. Why, like, follow me around. Can I get my glasses? Right. I got these at the Zenny booth at WSOP. I don't know why I'm doing this, though. Like, you guys, you guys going to be following me around all day? All day. My name is Antonio Brego, photographer, cinematographer at Poker Go. Been doing this for over 15 years, 16 years. I love doing photography, cinematography, uh, lighting as well, as you can see. Um, I just like making great content. That's pretty much it. So now they forced me to have John follow me around, which is probably the worst thing ever. Just capture my day in the life. All right, so there's guys over here with the bucket hats. Oh, I definitely want to get a portrait of them. Hey, bucket dudes. Can I get a photo of you guys with the same thing with that? Oh, this is sick. All right, three, two, one. Can you see? Yeah, I can see. So you'll in the show if I can get it. Okay. Liz just came up to me and asked me to, if I could upload this now, stat, to production because they need it right away. You have Pat's name? So. Pat McMahon. You come here so. and interrupt me, Liz. No, no, but this is part of the job. My job, Pat sent me back here. You know what I'm saying? I had to come back here because he was taking so long. You want to see something cool? Oh, no, I want you to send that picture. <laughs> <laughs> going, I'm going, I'm going. I can't, I can't have you here bleeding okay. behind my neck. Bye. 
we are heading to the 10K horse. Uh, usually, the day before the stream, I have to shoot the final table, uh, get some nice little headshots for the stream so they can uh, chop them out and then put them on their little graphic on the bottom right. This is why I love the World Series of Poker. Friends, poker, and photography, and the food. And the hoodies. The challenges of shooting while people are paying for $107. I think it's just being respectful, really. Uh, respecting the players, making sure if they are in a deep hand, you know, you avoid them. So I usually try to avoid eye contact with all the players because, you know, they're playing. What makes a great photo in poker is like, I think it's just like, I, I think about it as a poker player's perspective. What would the poker player like? Like, the poker player's not gonna like a basic photo. I put myself in the poker player's shoes of what kind of photo would this guy like? And then I take that photo. And that's pretty much poker. We do the same shots over and over again, so we have to get creative. Joining Poker Go, that was one thing I didn't want to do because as a freelancer, you're always creating stuff. When you get a full-time job, you kind of lose that creativity and passion. And I was, I told myself, if I do take this job in Poker Go, I will not do that. And yeah, man, I've just been creating and learning every day. I definitely want to do a portrait of the KFC hats inside the studio. Oh, that's great. All right, everyone get in tight. Here we go, Sam. Hi. Everyone in here, good. Come in a little tight in here. Yeah. All right, Woo! three, two, one, let's go! Woo! Beautiful. And now I'm gonna get individuals with him real quick. Yeah. And can I get one bucket? Yeah. One bucket? Yeah. Yes, man, thanks. <laughs> We're good. We're good. Appreciate it. Why do we have two? Uh, it's his first one. one. He won one, one already. He won one last year. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. Sick! And then one more standing. Oops. I'll pull back on me. And right here. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Check. Ah, so sick. Hold that again. Three, two, one. Buckets! Group, let's go! Ready? Three, two, one. Cheer! Woo! So it's a wrap. Uh, seen kind of my day. It was actually an early day. I don't know what time it is. But probably like eight o'clock. It's actually a super fast day, which is great for me because I get to go home. I already shot the 10K. Uh, shot the final table, and that's how a professional photographer does it. Be passionate and do better every day, and learn. That's it. All right, so we're here in the broadcast booth. We are about to call the final table of the $1,500 millionaire. Maker. He's Brent Hanks, by the way, if you didn't know. Yeah. I'm Jeff Platt. I mean, you probably knew. Probably knew. They probably know Jeff. Yeah, probably yeah. Um, I know you guys are usually stuck with Donnie and Remco. Oh. So, oh, that was, that was a bit of a negative reaction. I mean, I just feel bad. For who? Well, the people watching the, the people vlog. watch stuck with Donnie and Remco. They're, they're biking and, and, and there was some doing cycling. meal prep. There's some meal prep. I mean, we have snacks. This is our meal prep. Look at, get these snacks. You know, Ronnie uh, had a shot. And the freeze 500 out. 500 freeze out, 13th place. Out of like 4,500 players or yeah. something absurd. But I like, cried a little okay, bit. Sorry, you know, guys. with oh, Ronnie making that run, all that hard work, the amount of time we've spent with Uncle Ron on our show. And, he's uh, been around a while. He's a legend. Like he with Poker Go, really, I mean. Probably Poker, I mean, I would say Hall of Fame bound at this point. What's amazing, about Uncle Ron yeah. finishing in 13th, yeah. never came out of character. All right, he was two but, days of Uncle Ron. But it, it's also, he doesn't come out of character because that is him. 
He's genuinely Uncle Ron. I, I, I don't think he's Mason anymore. That's gone. I, I never see Mason. Barking at the flop yeah. turning river. Carl, the dog in the bag, uh, you know, which he sleeps with every night. I've seen it. Um, you know, it's, 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 it was a special moment. For me, this was the number one moment thus far at the World Series of Poker. Oh. Hey, Carl. Hi, I'm Uncle Ron, and this is Carl Childers, my dog. I just busted in 13th place in the $500 freeze out of the World Series of Poker bracelet event. What am I going to do for the rest of the series? Um, I'm flying back to Kansas, going to go back and mow my uh, lawn. I got uh, lawn of the year in my neighborhood last year, and I got a really good shot at getting lawn of the year um, this year, but I got to get back, water it, cut it just take care of it, you know? And um, then I'll be back for the $10,000 main event. And I'm gonna have Lucky Melon, Carl Childers, and who knows what else. Gonna try to make a run just like I did today. Trapping left and right, trapping that ass. Cool. All right, uh, put, put him on the chair real quick. I'm gonna get some pizza shots. Okay. Lucky Melon's still back in Kansas right now. Um, just, I have it in the freezer right now because it's over five years old now. So um, I'm gonna try to bring it back out for the main event. So I'm gonna use the Lucky Melon for the, the big events. Oh, shit. Wow, you made it to the end of the video. Very impressed. And if you made it this far, Please like and subscribe, leave a comment down below, let us know what you want to see from the World Series of Poker next week, because we'll be back with another vlog. We're going to be playing in the next vlog, well hopefully playing for an extended period of time. We got the Colossus, we got the Tag Team event, Remco, myself, Tim Duckworth, Cameraman John, we're going to be getting in there, we're going to be trying to get ourselves out of the red and into the black. Is that, is that Hold'em by the way? Yeah, but I wonder if it's dealer's choice. It'd be great if it was a dealer's choice. We could tag each other in. You could play Badoogie. <laughs> I could play Triple Draw, whatever it may be. That'd be better. I haven't played No, no Lane with Oldham in a very long time, but I'm probably still better than John. So that makes me feel very good. You're anyway. definitely better than Tim. For, that's for sure. Like, I don't know how you can be worse than someone who doesn't play any hands. Anyway, to summarize, thanks for watching. We'll be back next week with another vlog. Welcome to Zenny at the World Series of Poker Tournament. Why don't you want to come over here and get yourself a pair of glasses to protect your eyes from the other players knowing what's going on in your mind? Maybe you need these mirror tinted glasses. I don't know. I don't know you. I don't know your life. I don't know if you're lucky or not.